for the last 2.6 million years, also known as the Quaternary Period, our planet has witnessed severe climate changes. Long cold periods or glaciations have alternated with short warm intervals or interglacials. During the glaciations, water was locked in huge ice caps up to several kilometers thick, causing sea level to drop drastically. During the interglacials, the ice sheets melted and the sea level rose again. The once dry landscapes were drowned and subsequently buried by sediment. In some cases, the landscapes are even still visible on the sea floor today. In the Belgian part of the North Sea, the quaternary sediments are thin and very fragmented. This means that prehistoric landscapes and the fossils therein are easily disturbed by offshore activities. A good example of such a disrupted prehistoric landscape is the so-called Schur, a navigation channel off Zeebrugge. The channel is regularly dredged and for decades fishermen have uncovered bone material here from extinct mammals. Fragments were found here of, among others, elephant, rhinoceros, hippo, boar and red deer. Woolly mammoth and woolly rhinoceros were also fished up. The first group of mammals lived in a warm, temperate climate, dominated by forested landscapes with rivers and lagoons, whereas the latter lived in a cold climate, dominated by barren landscapes cut by rivers. In order to find out more about these mammals and their diverse habitats, a comprehensive reconstruction of the landscape during the last interglacial glacial cycle was recently begun. Roughly 120,000 years ago, at the start of the Eemian interglacial, the Schur formed part of a forested landscape cut by large rivers. When the climate got warmer, the coastline gradually retreated and the sea invaded the rivers. Gradually, the rivers transformed into estuaries, creating large islands. Finally, these islands drowned when sea level continued to rise. At the start of the last ice age, approximately 100,000 years ago, the climate cooled down once more. Sea levels dropped and the islands emerged again, now inhabited by cold, loving animals such as walruses. At the Schur, hundreds of walrus bones have been found ranging from youngsters to adults, indicating that a large walrus colony lived on these islands just a few kilometers off the present coastline. As it got colder and the sea retreated further, the rivers reclaimed their former positions in a barren landscape devoid of forests, creating homes for large mammals such as mammoth and woolly rhinoceros. During this cold period, which lasted for tens of thousands of years, sea levels dropped over a hundred meters and the entire North Sea was transformed into a tundra landscape cut by rivers. But how do we know what the drowned prehistoric landscapes of the North Sea looked like? The first step to visualize these landscapes involves the use of seismic techniques. A sound source is towed behind a ship or attached to an underwater robot and sends out an acoustic signal that travels down through the water, penetrates the sea floor and bounces back from the different sediment layers beneath. These recorded signals, after extensive processing, allow us to visualize the buried layers and their relief. In order to reconstruct the natural environment, for instance the presence of rivers, lakes, swamps or beaches, sediment cores need to be taken. Pollen from plants preserved within the sediments provide information about the climate and vegetation. Microscopic algae, also called diatoms, tell us more about the water environment, as does the shell material. The Schur is not the only fossil find spot. The large quantities of bone material dredged up from the bottom of the North Sea over the last decades suggest that in the past, these now drowned landscapes were full of life. Reconstructing the prehistoric landscapes helps us to understand where animals once roamed and where our ancestors, who were mainly hunter-gatherers, may have lived and how they migrated. Direct evidence of human presence in the North Sea is very rare up to now. 
In 2005, a small bone fragment was recovered during offshore works near the coast of Zeeland, not far from the Belgian border. Research shows that it belonged to a young Neanderthal male that lived in the rhine meuse river plain approximately 30,000 to 50,000 years ago. Recently, another human bone was fished up near the Eurochul, west of the harbour of Rotterdam. The skull fragment appears to be 13,000 years old and probably belonged to a young to middle-aged adult. What does that mean in terms of policy? When the offshore industry has activities and constructions planned at sea, it is helpful for them to know what areas are archaeologically sensitive. In Belgium, major infrastructure works are planned at sea in the near future in order to protect our coast from major storms. The Schuur is one of the targeted areas. The amount of bone material already found here indicates an extremely sensitive archaeological spot and it is possible that human artefacts may be preserved here. Knowing what the prehistoric landscape looked like is crucial for minimizing the damage to archaeological artefacts. It also helps the industry save both time and money by reducing possible delays due to unexpected finds. Last but not least, a better knowledge of the islands and lagoons that once existed off Zeebrugge allows us to better evaluate the effects of future sea level change on the present coast. In other words, the past is our window to the future. <laughs>